Good evening, Mr. Miller. Good evening, Miller. How are you? Good evening. Very well. Hey, wait for baby! Your invitation, please. Take nothing of it. I'm from the quarry. I'm sorry, sir. Admittance is by invitation only. Yeah, but I was sent by the... Why, certainly she expects me. What do you think I am, a gate crasher? Step this way, please. Jane, dear, you look marvelous. And I ought to. I've been leaping from hairdressers to manicurists, and I'm utterly haggard. <laughs> Darling, you look perfectly charming. Thank you. Grayson, have you no better use for your fingers than to be wearing our doorbells? Sure, and I might better be chuckling you under your pretty chin, McQuishla. I'm in a hurry. What do you want? Well, she's from the courier I am, but that can wait. How are you, me darling? None the better for having seen your face. And how's the rising young civil engineer tonight? Very civil, sir. You don't want any bridges or subways built, do you? No, thanks. But I don't mind telling you, Dick. If I had any more daughters to bring out, you could build me a nice graded road. Right up to the poorhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I hear about you kicking a hole in the Allison Million. Oh, Dad's a bit jittery. He just saw the bill for this. Oh. Like it? Why, uh... I like everything about you. Only... Only what? Only that a face as pretty as yours doesn't need a frame. Why, Dick, you're getting positively gallant. Well, thanks. I... I... You know, Madge... I was just thinking. Daddy, Daddy. Hello, Brenda. Oh, hello. Hello, Red. Hello, Dick. Hello. What are you doing so far from Greenwich Village? Oh, must see how the other half lives. Tell them. Tell them about the scholarship you want. Quiet. Same old Brenda. Unspoiled by success. Democratic as ever. Aren't you dancing? Yes, if I can ever get rubber legs here straightened out. Really, my dear, this game you imagined is the nicest one I've been to this season. If you ask me, it's a waste of time. Oh, me, Allison, you know perfectly well it's to give her an opportunity to meet some really eligible young men. She's known the best one of the lot for years if she only had sense enough to accept him. Am I right? Well, it would be a brilliant marriage, wouldn't it? You know, I hate women who talk about their sons. But Richard really has a lot to recommend him. Including his mother. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Madge. Yes? I... I feel a proposal coming on. What, again? You'd better watch out. First thing you know, you won't be able to stop. Oh, this is only my first one today. Oh, tapering off, eh? If I could or ever wanted to. What do you say, Matt, shall we? Oh. You were much better on Thursday. Huh? You were... You had a little more quaver in your voice. You know, like a cello. Well, I'll admit I'm no ball of fire, but, but I have good prospects. I'm... Steady, reliable, fairly well off, or will be. And I'm terribly fond of you. I know you are, Dick. That isn't enough. Isn't enough what? Isn't enough romance and color. What it takes to sweep them off their feet. The man I marry must, must do things. 
Well, I guess you've never built a tri-span cantilever bridge in the wintertime when the... No, and I've never built a skyscraper either. But I have built castles in the air with drawbridges. And over the bridge rides a knight in armor. Sometimes looks like you. Yeah? So help me, Hannah, he never acts like you. Sorry. I'm sorry too, Dick. Because I am fond of you. You don't mind if I keep posing once in a while, do you? Certainly not. As often as you like. Dick, let's dance. Come on. Hi, Gary. Oh, Dame. Hurry up with that yarn of yours. What yarn? On the Alice and Reception, of course. You got it, didn't you? Oh, that. Oh, sure I got it. What there was of it. Say, why don't you give me some decent assignments? Let Sally here handle this fight. You know perfectly well I that... I know, I know. You used to be a big shot war correspondent. Meanwhile, you confer a great favor on our paper by parking that globe-trotting carcass of yours, that yarn typewriter, and knocking out about three sticks on the Alice and Reception. That's quite all right, Miss Patrick. Thank you. Go ahead, use it. Say, you weren't at the reception. Where'd you get this list of guests? From the social register. Mostly guesswork, of course. Put two and two together and make 400, my pal. Sally, if you could only cook. Mm -hmm. How come you couldn't get in? I say, did you ever try to get past an English butler? A real English butler, I mean? I thought you had a way with women. Why didn't you try one of the maids? What? Why, darling, you know I never look at another woman but you. Much. I tell you, you call me tomorrow if you feel like a game of golf. Great. You know, I've been so busy of late, I wouldn't know what a golf club looks like. Well, Goodbye. good night. Good night. Good night, Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night. Good night. Oh, it's been marvelous. Mm -hmm. Had a good time, dear? That was the grandest time of my life. I don't know how I'm going to thank you two, darling. I know an awfully nice present you could give me. What's that? Son-in-law. You couldn't mean Dick. Is this the residence of Monsieur and Madame Allison? Yes, ma'am. But the party is over. All the guests have gone. Huh. A skeleton at a feast may arrive when he chooses. I, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Will you tell them that Madame Duval is here? From Saint-Lazare. Very good, ma'am. Uh, Madame Duval to see you, ma'am. Duval? We don't know anyone of that name, do we, dear? No. The lady said she came from Saint Lazare. Why, Dad? Mother? What is it? No, oh, it's nothing. Uh, nothing, dear. Good evening. You pardon my disturbing you at such a late hour, no? Of course. So, this is the daughter. Oh, you are very like your mother. Yes, very like her. Couldn't we postpone this uh, conference until some other time? She must know some time. I must know what? Simply this, my dear. Please, you. if she must know, I'll be the one to tell her. Match, my dear. Yes, mother. That's just it. I'm not your mother. Not my mother. But I don't understand. It's true, Match. You see, your mother and I shared the same cell at Saint Lazare. You knew, madame, that Justina died last year in prison. 
Yes, I know. She was your mother's sister. They adopted you when your mother was sentenced to life imprisonment. My mother? Life imprisonment? For complicity. How you say? Uh, for uh, accessory to the murder of her husband? You see, she was surprised by her husband. There were high words. The other man had an eye then. No. No. Oh, but I have the proof. You see, the adoption papers signed by this lady and gentleman. Some uh, photograph, trinket, and the ring. <coughs> you needn't have been so brutal about it. Surely you might have spared a sensitive girl's feelings. When one has lived for 20 years in a steel cage, one forgets there are such things as feelings. No matter how much you suffered, was it necessary for you to come here and revenge yourself on an innocent girl who's never harmed you? Revenge? Why, I do not understand. I came here as a friend, you see. I am a stranger without fans. You are the only people of whom I knew, to whom I could turn. Go on. Well, uh, I said to myself, sir, I shall go to those so very kind Alison. If they cannot help me, I must earn my own living. I shall become a writer, I said to myself. Maybe some big newspaper might be interested in my, uh, what do you say, reminiscences of Saint Lazare? Of course, it makes me very sad when I remind myself of those unhappy years, to recall those faces names and histories of those poor unfortunates whom I knew so well. Still, I said to myself, newspapers pay very well for such stories. And one must live. Don't you think so? How much? Oh, you Americans are very understanding. You are very generous. Really? Very, very kind. How much? <laughs> well, you see, your bags are so inquisitive when one presents a check. Perhaps cash would be better, no? As you wish. Good. I will be at your office tomorrow morning. Well, uh, bonsoir, madame, monsieur. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure, I'm sure. Darling, nothing's going to happen. No one will ever know. Everything's being taken care of by Rodney. If a skeleton can get out of a closet once, it can do it again. Well, at least we can keep the closet closed until... What I mean to say is, dear, after you're married, what people say isn't quite so important. You mean not tell Dick about what happened last night? Why, I... I couldn't marry him or anyone else with that hanging over my head. Could I? This sounds as, as though I were encouraging you to be deceitful. But you've everything to gain and nothing to lose by keeping quiet. It's you he loves. The girl he knows as Madge Allison. That's just why I couldn't play a shabby trick like that on him. Yes? Mr. Taylor is downstairs, miss. Tell him Miss Allison will be right down. But I don't want to see him. Now, do be sensible, Madge, dear. Don't you understand? What happened in the past to my sister needn't affect you and Dick. All right. Hello. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, you've been doing that for years. 
filthy mad. You know they won't let you in on the greens in those high heels. I'm not going. But darling, last night you said... I, I know, but I've, I've gone off my game. Overnight? Yes. How about some tennis, then? No, I... I don't feel very well, Dick. You know, as a matter of fact, you don't look very well. Tired? Sort of. I've got it. How about a nice restful weekend aboard the yacht? It's eating its head off doing nothing. Well, take your mother with us. My mother? Yes. No. No, it's impossible, Dick. Then what's got into you, Madge? You used to be keen on golf and tennis. I thought you liked yachting, too. Oh, I I'd be such rotten company for anyone. Okay. Some other time, then. Rain check? Perhaps. We'll see. Goodbye. Dear, all I can say is if you, if you don't approve of her going out so much and so late, oh, why don't you speak to her about it? But what can I say to her? After all, she's of age. You merely suggest in a nice way that she bring her friends here so that we can meet them. Oh, don't you see how difficult it is to say that? It sounds like a parent who insists on first passing approval on her daughter's young man. And we've no longer that right. Ordinarily, I shouldn't worry about Madge. But lately she's been so... How shall I say it? So feverishly active. <laughs> it's almost funny. A month ago we were worried because she was despondent and didn't go out enough. Now we're worried because she goes out too much. Personally, I'd rather she stayed a recluse than getting about the way she's been doing. Oh. Not good, but loud. Mustn't hear at Greenwich Village talent, darling. They're very sensitive. Gee, me? Not a squawk and a call. Yeah. Don't mention Mendel's phone to me. He stole my friend. Where does she get off by an old passion? Well, she doesn't know the first thing about the interview. The trouble with him is, when he paints a tree, it looks like a tree. Oh, I went. How did I know that it was a tattoo? Yeah. Well, here's to you. <laughs> what is it, liquid razor blade? It's called Unga Pay. I got the recipe from a melee pirate. Well, for the love of Mike, give it back to him. You never told me you'd been in the melee in Archipelago, Gary. Hiya, kid. I'll tell you, it's like this. When I'm with you, darling, I can't even say, Archipelago. Hello, Brenda. How's everything on Park Avenue? Oh, swell. I brought some of the birds. The Dallas and the Pat. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Dane. Hello. Oh. Welcome to our slum. But a very nice slum. Chief, a little gadget, that. What is it, this African 1936? That? That's an African witch doctor's headdress. Quite a story attached to it. It may sound silly, but I wore that thing escaping from a Swahili stockade. Good heavens. No, good disguise. You should tell me more about yourself. You sound marvelous. What do you mean, sound marvelous? I am marvelous. <laughs> Miss, uh... I don't think I caught your name. Yeah. But I thought you knew me. You told our butler you did. Say, you're not mad, Allison, are you? Don't you remember? You had an appointment with me. By the way, whatever happened to you? Well, we won't go into that. <laughs> I'll say this much. I'm a better host than you are. When I go to a party at your house, you have me That's probably because you tried to crash my phone. And I was invited to yours. 
Maybe it's on account of I can't afford to hire an imported flunky to slam the door in your face. Let me see. I think a face like yours would take about uh, a number seven door. Or maybe even six A. Next time I'll be sure that he lets you in. That is if you still want to come in. What do you mean if? I'll be there tomorrow. Where should we go? Why go anywhere? You're plenty of scenery for me, baby. You work fast, don't you? Well, if I didn't, somebody else might grab you off. I thought newspaper men ask questions. You seem to know all the answers. Maybe I'm a good reporter. And that's the trouble with being a good reporter. You can't give the girls a play. Tough on them, too. He should have only one love, his paper. Oh, I never said I was a good reporter. <laughs> and I never said I wanted to be your second love, or your first. Oh, well, in that case, I guess I'd just better be a good reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what is a good reporter? A guy who can smell out a story and print it, regardless of everything. Everything? Well, nearly everything, yes. And nearly everything I've ever done has been routine. Exciting, dangerous perhaps, but routine. You've done one thing I'll never be able to do. What's that? Eat with those. Well, the Chinese say food tastes better this way. It's really very easy luck. Like this? Not quite. Never mind, I'll stick to my fork. And you'd better stick to your globe trotting. All right. Tell me, where else have you been? Oh, Ethiopia, the Rift country, Vienna, during the riots, Siberia, Manchuko. Every place I've wanted to go, everything I've wanted to do, but one. What's that? Hop a tramp and spend a year in the South Sea. Oh, not the tourist spots, but places like Bora Bora, Tonga, Rarotonga, little coral islands that white men have never spoiled. Blue lagoons, gleaming white beaches, and cocoa palms waving lazily in the breeze. Oh, it sounds lovely. It is lovely. But you'd hate it. Why? The grandest scenery in the world. But between stops, you're jouncing up and down, cooped up on an evil-smelling tramp. And as for the grub... Oh, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> well, it may be romantic, but it's no picnic for a woman, especially if she has Park Avenue in her blood. Oh, I'd love it. Yes, you would. Anybody else, maybe, but not the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Rodney Allison. What's the matter? Nothing. I, I'm going home. I'll drop you on the way. Hello, dear. Hello, Matt. Hello. You're just in time for tea. No, thanks. I don't care for any tea. Oh, what's the matter? Turn off your feed? I do wish you wouldn't use those expressions, Rodney. Oh, no. That isn't a horse. <laughs> this is a Richard Taylor. May I? Of course. You're always welcome. You know that. Why, Dick, you haven't been here for ages. Well, not through want of trying, I assure you. I, uh, I just dropped in and asked if you care to come to concert tonight. They're, they're doing deals. Oh, there, that's awfully sweet of you, Dick. I'm all in. I've been shopping all day. Oh. Bargain hunting? Yes. I've barely been off my feet since breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry. Some other time, perhaps. Well, I must be off. Dick, have some tea. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I promised to drop Mother to coffee. Well, I'll see you to the door. Have some work to do in the study. 
Madge, dear. Yes? I do wish you'd be a little nicer to Dick. After all, you've known each other for a good many years. I, I've known lots of people for a good many years. But that doesn't mean I have to go leaping out with them every time they ask me. Well, you go leaping out, as you put it, with a man you've barely met. A man about whom we know nothing. I know this much. He's got color and glamour. He's been places and he's done things. He's evidently done things to you. You sound as if you were in love with him. Suppose I am in love with him. Suppose I marry him. Suppose I don't. Matt, you mustn't say things like that. I'll say what I please. And I'll do what I please. What business is it of yours? You're not my mother. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I, I didn't mean it. Oh, it's all right, dear. I understand. off of playing that thing. Well, honey, I tell you, I've been on an assignment all afternoon. I give you my word. Your word. It's not worth the paper it's written on. What do you take me for anyway? A very sweet kid. Honey, I'm crazy about you. I've heard that before. Well, I mean it. <laughs> and someday, honey, I'll prove it. We'll hop a tramp and spend a year in the South Seas. Bora Bora, Tonga, Saratonga, little coral islands. That white men have never spoiled. I've heard that before, too. If you think you can two-time me with that uptown Allison dame, you're mighty much mistaken, and don't forget it. But, honey, I never two-timed you in my life. Liar! You've been chasing her for weeks and giving me the runaround. I'm not an idiot. I'm a newspaper woman. And a very good one, too. Shut up! You've stepped out of line just once too often, and I'm not going to take it sitting down. See? Hey, wait a minute. What are you going to do? Sure, and if I knew, I wouldn't tell you. This is a surprise. Oh, Gary, I'm so miserable. Well, what's the matter, honey? Don't talk. You told me tight. It's a pleasure. I'm sorry. Oh, don't stop on my account. It isn't very often I get a chance to hold a park yet. Oh, don't talk that way. I'm not. What is it, Madge? Gary, do you love me? Why, of course I do, honey. The real me, I mean. Say, what is this, 20 questions? I'm not playing a game, I'm serious. Okay, I know a better game. One question. Will you marry me? I'm serious, too. Gary, there's something I must tell you. My died in a French prison. What? I'm only the adopted daughter of the Allisons. My real mother was convicted of murder. Now that I've told you that, do you still want to marry me? Why, yes, I think I do. In fact, I know I do. Oh, Gary, never let me go. Never. Oh, you poor kid. Now, listen. I guess I'd better put my cards on the table, too. I warn you, I'm no bargain. I've knocked around a lot and done considerable chasing. Oh, let's not talk about the past. Oh, everybody knows what I've been. My past is no secret as yours is. Gary, I haven't told anyone about this but you. Not even Dick. Dick who? Dick Taylor, an old friend. The family would like me to marry him. Oh, but you're not having any. Is that it? Why, uh... What do you think? Et je suis dans une trance, 
Hi, Sally. Double whiskey for a single lady. Coming right up. How's the world been treating you? Rotten, thanks. I always thought Jenny Lynn was Swedish. That one can slap it up in any language. The only one she doesn't know is Finnish. May we ah. Hey, Garçon, another round of drinks for my dear public, and then after that, I shall reward them with another song. Don't you uh, think they've had enough? Say, today is the farewell of Yvette Duval. Tonight, she sails for La Belle France. Hey, take it easy, sister. Hundred dollar bills don't grow on trees. But they do, my friend. They do. <laughs> Family tree. <laughs> oh, this is very funny. Oh, Monsieur Addison would enjoy that. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 I make such funny jokes. Another brandy. Napoleon brandy. I wouldn't if I were you. Say, if I want your advice, I ask for it. Who's your friend? Search me, but boy, what a role. You don't suppose she's over here to pay the war debt? Fat chance. A month ago she was buying beer, and now hundred dollar bills. She must know where the body's buried. Patrick, see if you've got anything on a woman named Yvette Duval. Duval. Yeah. I'll wait. Oh. Oh. What? Nothing, eh? Thanks. Oh, no, no. Just a hunch. Come on, Billy, let me get now. Out like a light. Call a taxi somewhere. I'll get one. You know where she lives? I don't know. Hey, I'll take her with me. Come on. Say, why don't you dump her in a cab and just let her... With that roll, be yourself. You know what those taxi pirates are. Come on. All right, give me a hand here.
forehead. How do you feel? What am I? Who are you? Don't you remember what happened at the cocktail bar? Oh, another thing. This is my apartment. I brought you here when you got a bit merry. You know, talkative. Did I, uh, what you say, talk too much? <laughs> you were charming. Told us all about going back to France. My ticket. My bag. I've been robbed. Here you are. Safe and sound. Ah. Uh, you are very kind, mademoiselle. Mm -hmm. Skip it. I can help you a lot more if you play ball with me. Play ball? <laughs> What is that? Just a good old American custom. You help me, and I'll help you. I want to know what you've got on the Allison. The Harrison? I never heard of them. They are total strangers to me. Hmm. Total strangers don't pay out thousands of dollars for nothing. Especially to ex-convicts. Why, I don't know what you are talking about. Oh, you don't, eh? No, I don't. I can tell you something else you don't know. What? Where your money is. My money? Where is my money? Now, don't get excited. It's quite safe. Well, give it to me. Sure. Just as soon as you give me the lowdown on the Allison. I told you I don't know what you are talking about. Okay. Hey, where are you going? To the police, of course. Good. I'm going with you. They make you give it back to me? Sure. Your word's as good as mine. Maybe better. I'm only an honest newspaper gal. You're an ex-convict on parole. You will tell him who I am? Naturally. Coming? Wait! You will not reveal my identity to anyone? Of course not. And not publish a story until the boat she sails? Absolutely. Promise? Say, what do you take me for, a double crosser? No, no. No, of course not. Okay. Now come on with the story. Come on, be a good fellow, will you? I only want to ask you a few questions. Oh, I want a couple of pictures. We'll take some of you, too. Tell him I'm from the news. My editor said... I just a minute, please. Are all you gentlemen of the press? Well, sure, 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 of course we are. are. You're not what I'd call gentlemen. Oh, 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 come on, let's go. go. You're quite sure you haven't said anything to anybody? You no, know I haven't. Then how did it get in there? There's been a leak somewhere. You don't suppose that woman... Would she be? wouldn't dare. Good morning. Breakfast ready? Madge, you haven't been talking to any of our friends, have you, about that Duval woman's visit? Why, uh, of course not. Why? Good 
a nice story, Ken. Thanks. Glad you like it. You know what else I'd like? What's that? To give you a good swift punch in the nose. Ooh, I wouldn't do that. I need it to smell out dirty linen. Exhibit A. You think you're funny, don't you? Well, it's not so funny taking a decent girl's name and kicking it around in the gutter. Listen, Blue Nose, you've two-timed me once too often. I said I'd get even. I have. Well, you don't think you've queered me with Madge, do you? Why, all I've got to do is call her up and square myself. Like that. There's the phone. Use it. I wouldn't even talk to a decent girl on the same phone that you've used. I'll use a pay phone. You better save your nickel, Sonny. She's going to be out to you for a long, long time. Mr. Taylor is calling us. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see anybody. Miss. Tell him I'm out. Not to an old friend, surely. Evidently, you didn't see today's paper. That's why I'm here. The Dane person is calling again. Tell him I'm still out. Very well, miss. Be out to everyone else, Madge, if you want to. But never be out to me. Even... Even after what's happened? Nothing's happened. You're still the same, Madge, as far as I'm concerned. I'm afraid to trust anybody. Oh, Dick, to think he'd do such a thing. Who? Who do what? Gary Dane, the fellow who just phoned. He's a reporter. I told him all about me. You... you told a reporter? Mm-hmm. Because I loved him. Oh, I thought I did. I confided in him, and then he let me down like this. I don't care who let you down, as long as I'm here to catch you. Why can't people play on the square? Why aren't they on the level? Very few men are, Madge. Well, you are. Oh, Dick, what an idiot I've been. Believe me, I've learned a lesson. Never again, no more. No more, no more what? No more romantic Romeos. Give me a nice, substantial person. I don't care if he's homely, Wait I... a minute. If there's any proposing to be done, I'll do it. Of course, I may be a bit out of practice. It's been so long since I've asked you. Darling. Where we live? Well, let's see now. The firm's just finished the subway. Maybe they'd rent us one of the stations. Oh, much too romantic. Well, uh, how about a... How about a nice bridge? I know one that's got a self-contained tool shed and a grand view of the river. Sold. And I'll climb to the top and I'll shout to the world that I'm Mrs. Richard G. Taylor III. You stay in your tool shed. I'll do the shouting for both of us. And you know what I'm going to do tomorrow morning? No, what? I'm going to take you down to the fanciest jewelers in town and buy you the fanciest engagement ring you've ever worn. Oh, that's easy. It'll be the first one I've ever worn or ever will wear. And you know what I'm going to do now? No. I'm going straight home. And I'm going to tell Mother I'm engaged to the swellest, prettiest, loveliest, finest kid I know. I've wanted to marry her for years. And now I'm going to do it. I've already phoned the announcement of the evening papers. In that case, there's nothing left for me to say, except I wish you luck. Now you're talking. As a matter of fact, I was a bit doubtful how you take the good news after... Well, you know what I mean. How else would you expect a mother to act when her son tells her he's going to marry a girl like... After all, it's your happiness that counts. My son's happiness. And my son's future. That's all I'm concerned with. If you go through with this marriage, my dear, you'll be making things difficult. Making things difficult? But I... I don't understand. My husband left his entire fortune to me. Now, you couldn't expect me to leave it to my son if he marries against my wishes. Now, could you? But I'm not marrying Dick for his money. I'm marrying him because I think he's the finest person I've ever known. I love your son, Mrs. Taylor. And I'll do anything to make him happy. What a help. Have you thought of his career? What would happen to it? Married to the daughter of a... of Justina Lamont? His friends snubbing him. His professional associates sneering at him behind his back. Losing contract after contract. 
because every decent home and club in town would be closed to him. Is that how you'd help him with his career? But I... A moment ago, you said you'd do anything to help him, to make him happy. Why, yes, I, I did. Very well, then. Give him up. And if I don't, then what? Well, you wish you had. Both of you. That's all. doing here? I've been trying to get you on the phone all day. I wanted you to know that I didn't spill that story. What? One of the bunch at the office stumbled on the yarn. I didn't know a thing about it, Madge, and that's the honest truth. I sort of figured I was in the doghouse, judging by the way you were ducking my phone calls. I'm sorry. I see by tonight's papers you're engaged to the old sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Well, good luck and all that sort of thing. Thanks, Gary. Well, that's all, I guess. I just didn't want you to think ill of me after I'd gone. Gone? Where? Boy, am I smart. I promoted a job writing publicity for a line of freighters. You know, cabin boats, only three or four passengers. Oh, you're going then. And what a trip. Free passage. Tahiti, Bali, French Indochina. Every place I've ever wanted to see. And they don't know it yet. But if I find some place I like, little Gary's going to jump ship. Let him whistle for their publicity. I'm going to find me a coral island with swaying palm trees and just lie there and dream. A million miles from anywhere. No worries, no cares, no fears of the past, present, or future. When are you leaving? Tomorrow noon on the tramp at Eastern Star. Too bad you're not going with me. Perhaps I will go. What? It doesn't particularly matter where I go or what I do. Yeah, but... What about Dick, Dick, what's his name, Dick Taylor? I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. I get it. You couldn't love a guy like that. It happens that I do love him, only. I'd rather not go into it. Well, it's okay with me, baby. If you want to go to the devil, you couldn't go in better company. Where do we leave from? Pier 10, at noon. It's a date. I'll be seeing you. Yes? Mr. Taylor is downstairs, miss. Tell him I'll be right down. Very good, miss. Hello, darling. Not ready yet? I thought you'd be up at the crack of dawn to help me select the ring. I'm not going. Okay, then I'll go down and pick it out myself for you. Any preference? No, Dick. I'm not going to marry you. Huh? All right, then. I'll marry you. I'm not joking. I'm not going through with it. But, but darling... I'm sailing at noon for Tahiti with Gary Dane. What did you say? I said I'm sailing at noon for Tahiti with Gary Dane. Madge, you don't realize what you're saying. I realize perfectly well what I'm saying and doing. I'm in love with him. I always have been and I always will be. But only yesterday you promised... Dick, I've never cared for you the way I have for Gary. Oh. I'm sorry. It's the way it is. And yet it's... It's better to know before than after it's too late. 
isn't it? Do you really mean to go away with him? And nothing I can say or do would stop you? Nothing. Well, I guess there's no point in my hanging around here. Goodbye. And good luck. Thank you, Dick. Good morning. Don't tell me you're going domestic all of a sudden. I always thought neatness was one of the first requisites of a husband. You, a husband? I wouldn't have you as a gift. Ah, but there's them as would, me proud beauty. Name one. Madge Allison. What? Oh, you thought you'd gum our little romance by running that yarn, huh? Well, sister, because that's all you can ever be to me now, you played right into my hands. Oh, oh, but Gary, I, I... Are you sure? You thought you'd queer me with her or her with me? Well, you queered her all right, but not with me, with that stuffed shirt Taylor. Taylor? Taylor who? Dick Taylor, her former boyfriend. Well, where are you going now? Oh, just on a little honeymoon to the South Seas for a year or so. Don't wait up for me. Hello, girlie. Get me the Star Steamship Company. I want to speak to the passenger agent. Hello. Has a Mr. Gary Dane booked passage on the, uh, 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 Eastern Star? Oh, a lady, too. How nice. Sailing at noon, eh? That's what he thinks. Taylor, the boat sails in less than an hour. I repeat, Miss Patrick, it's hardly my place to interfere if Miss Allison chooses to go abroad. But with a chiseler like Gary, of all the low, down, double-crossing heels, he's the all-time All-American champ. Where do you suppose he got the money to pay for this trip? His salary and savings, I should imagine. Savings? Him? <laughs> he's blown every nickel he's ever made on liquor and women. I'll tell you where he got it. From me. That's where he got it. Well, I... I hardly think that's sufficient grounds for me to interfere with her... marriage. Marriage? You don't kid yourself he's gonna marry her, do you? He... he's already got one wife. What? Yeah, and a kid, too. Deserted him when he first came to New York. You wait here.
You know Match Allison? Why, well, yes. Captain got message for you. Me go tell him, huh? Oh, put bag in cabin? Yes, please. <laughs> Allison? How do you do, Captain? Could you tell me if Mr. Dane has come aboard yet? Well, the young man just phoned to say that he'd be temporarily delayed. But supposing he isn't here by sailing time? Well, in that case, we'll just have to wait for him. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. Shucks, on an eight months voyage, what's a couple of hours? It'll all be the same a hundred years from now. That's my motto. And now, if you'll excuse me, Wang will show you to your cabin. Wang! Yes. Take the lady to her cabin. Thank you. Can't say as I set much store by that young man of yours, keeping a pretty girl like you waiting. <laughs> the truth were told, I can't say as I set much store by him myself. What's this? Panning your future husband already? Why, Dick! Here, I'll take those. Never try to do two things at once. That's my motto. <laughs> <laughs> but I... I don't understand. Well, you wanted remand, didn't you? And here I am as advertised. Come on, stop rubbering and stow these in the gentleman's cabin. You'll see lots of that kissy-wissy business for the next eight months. couldn't make it. He's kind of tied up. What's the idea? Trying out a straitjacket? Oh, I wait till I get my hands on that rat. Rats don't tie people up. They know I'm free. Don't you remember... I'm so talking about Taylor. Richard G. Taylor III. Boy, what I won't do to him. Nobody can break into my room and trust me up. Of course not. It's all done with mirrors. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, operator. Hello. See, Mr. Taylor left his calling card. Polite young man, isn't he? He'll need that perverted sense of humor of his before I get through with him. Mm. I wish he'd play a few practical jokes on me at a thousand bucks to throw. Huh? Well, that. Well, that's the paper, the steamship ticket. I, uh, I gave him mine. Steamship ticket? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Your honeymoon. Where were you going? None of your business. How do you like that? Fine. How do you like this? Hey, wait a minute. That's mine. Ours, my pet. It's going into a joint bank account. And if you want your half, you'll have to marry me to get it. Say, have you gone nuts? Probably. Oh, I know you're a two-timing double-crosser. But I love you just the same. So I guess it's the gypsum in me. Gypsy, not gypsum. Gypsum. A female gypsy. Some kind of a sap. Okay, have it your own way. Hmm. I intend to. <coughs> Lady of Grandpa, Mr. Lichard Taylor. I, I, I. I, I, I. It say that, see? Lichard Taylor. I, I, I. 
Oh, well, that must be for me then. <laughs> <laughs> it's for Mother. Listen. Your radiogram just received. Since you have persisted in defying your mother's wishes, you need not come back. She kept her word, didn't she? Kept her word? What do you mean? She said if I married you, she'd disinherit you. Oh. So that's why you put on that act about being in love with Gary. Oh, Dick, I should have made you go back. Now I've ruined your career. I wish you'd ruined it years ago when I first asked you to. I'm terribly sorry. Hey, will you please wait until you've heard the rest of this? What? Listen, you need not come back until you've had a wonderful honeymoon. Love to you both. For as much as Richard and Madge have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company and thereto have given and pledged their troth each to the other, I pronounce that they are man and wife. And that ought to hold you for a while. Leave that to me. Of <laughs> course, it wasn't like one of those fancy Fifth Avenue weddings with flowers and everything. And no one would ever mistake them for bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly what I call a brilliant marriage. Don't you dare say it wasn't a brilliant marriage. It was the nicest wedding I've ever seen. You know why? No, nope. can't say as I do. Well, because it has romance. Romance? <laughs> <laughs> Romance. Come on out with you to work. Romance.